So um, the question is in sort of what level of government does what. And that, that's where it really becomes important for students to really know. And the answer is largely it's a combination of governments. Right. Water is a very good area when you were talking about that. In Florida, we're very keen on water because there is a lake called Lake Lanier in Georgia from which a lot of the water comes down the Apalachicola River and really funds the, uh, uh, the, the uh, uh, oyster industry and a lot right. of the fishing industry. And right now, um, Atlanta, uh, the Atlanta suburbs are growing enormously. Right. They're using all the water. So the water flow is really reduced. So, uh, so, so Florida and Alabama are apoplectic right. because they are, they are suffering from this. Well, uh, you know, what do you do? In a federal system, you, you know, where the states are, are, are equals, what do you do? So the federal government has to get involved in this issue. It sounds like something out of a 40s western. <laughs> that Atlanta's the evil rancher upstream right. who's cut off the right. water to the small farmers down the way. Right. And you know, and we don't get our Apalachicola Bay oysters right. as a consequence. Exactly, exactly. Um, it's a huge economic consequence. Yeah. But but what does Georgia think? I mean, it's in their self-interest to right. use up all the water. I mean, yeah. it is a tragedy of the commons yeah. kind of issue. Well, why should they conserve water when they can use it all up? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a tremendous problem. But I mean, that's a federalism issue yeah. because you have these states that have tremendous problems. And what's happened, as you probably right. know, they've tried to do. Ever since I've been in Florida, they've had negotiations among all right. the governors. The governors change, they still talk, and nothing happens. Um, because of this basic issue, Georgia's yeah. self-interest, the governor of Georgia gets elected. He doesn't want to help out Alabama right. and uh, in Florida. He doesn't care about them. He's not elected by those guys. So it, it's become a federal issue. So the federal government ha is, the, is the referee in this instance. Okay, so you have elected officials involved in this issue. You have legislators making their own promises, right? Um, the residents of Lake Sydney Lanier who paid a great deal of money for their houses so they can sail on the lake are looking at a big mud hole, so they, they just want to see the lake fall. But also you have state and national agencies involved. It's, it's a navigable water, so the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers gets involved in this yeah. thing. And then because they're involved and it's a transboundary water issue, suddenly the Fish and Wildlife Service is involved and the EPA is involved. And because it goes from inland to the coast, NOAA gets involved. All of these different agencies at different levels come together. How do you coordinate all that? What can we, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we don't, okay. Well, well at the bottom line is if yeah. it cannot be solved at the, by the, right. the Corps has done some stuff. I mean, there are some agencies that have sort of primacy, if you will, in, right. in this area. And the Corps is one of them because right. they, they do this. They make the decision. The decision can be appealed. But in all honesty, I mean, it, will probably, it may well go to the Congress. I mean, the, right. if the Congress of the United States says, we, Georgia must do X, it must right. fulfill their, again, it's a contract that Georgia has to right. let so much water through. They must do this and you so then the students right. might say well, what happens if Georgia doesn't do this which right. is another really important question and now all of a sudden now we have the courts involved we do at the highest level we do interstate disputes the US Supreme Court is the court of original right. jurisdiction right. so you can see the US Supreme Court having to sit in a bench trial we, we, we to avoided make an that to, determination so far but it might yeah, yeah. so the kind you know what's I would be uh, well we'll see what happens I hate to predict but yeah the right. Congress could do something um, or in, and right. or the courts. I mean, if the Congress does make a ruling and the one state doesn't like it, which is likely because they're on other sides, then it might it eventually go to the court in addition to the Congress. So it's, it's, a, it's an interesting issue. On the other hand, keep in mind that that's why the Founding Fathers set up a system with so many transaction costs. I mean, we could have a system where we have um, an arbiter. Suppose we have right. a super arbiter who's uh, named to deal with all state, not the Supreme Court, but just this right. person, right? Um, it would be very efficient then, I don't know, 20 years ago or whenever this dispute really started, to sort of say, okay, we're going to go to the arbiter, and the arbiter decides, and that's the end of it. But that's not how the Founding Fathers did it. Right. You know, they set up a system with a lot of transaction costs because they wanted a system that was not especially right. efficient, but that was careful. Yeah. And that's what we get. The, the downside of it is maybe it's too careful sometimes, but on the other side, it's worked for a long time.